New shoe day Tuesday. New shoe day Tuesday. Say that quickly 10 times. Okay, these old workhorses are being semi-retired today. You can see here, pretty well worn and looking definitely worse for wear around the heel cups and uh, the stoppers there at the back. So time for these to go to the side a little bit because I'll still be using these, but I have, oh, good catch, replaced them with something we've seen quite a lot of lately, Velo Kicks. I've gone the standard Blanco base vanilla model and they come in my favorite shoe color, white. Okay, let's jump over it and have a look at the specs of these shoes. Pulling up the Velo Kicks website, it is another Aussie company that I am supporting today. So happy to support the team behind Velo Kicks. Uh, Nick Squalari right there, a very accomplished cyclist and time trialist. But more importantly, Nick is a podiatrist. So not only does he know cycling, he knows feet and shoes very, very well. Before pulling up the details of the Blanco Dials version of the shoes that I've gone with, you can see here, there's a few other custom made options for all your flashy, showy needs. I'll show a few more in a moment from their Instagram account. There are a ton of different things people are doing with the shoes that look pretty cool. But over to the Blanco Dials, I've gone with size 44. I'll talk more about the sizing in a moment. $289 Australian, uh, look, value-wise, give or take, does depend on what you're looking at in a shoe and what you're used to spending on a shoe. The alternative that I was looking at is over here, the S-Works shoes, and they retail for just a little bit more than $289, so that's definitely a draw card for these at the moment. Scrolling down, uh, I've got the ones with the black stoppers, the black accents on the bottom, not the red. So a little bit different to what's shown here, but pretty much the same everywhere else. Description. A little bit of a blurb there. Key features of what I was after. The dual dials, which are a little different to the ones I'm using on my current S-Works shoes. Uh, carbon sole and the weight they have listed here. 245 grams for the 41, 275 for the 45. So I suspect the 44s that I have will come in a little bit under 275 each. Um, replaceable heel pads, shoe bag, three holes for road cycling and the rest. Now sizing wise, they do have a chart here. We can measure your own foot up, but I did end up going the extra mile than this, sending over the length and width of both feet over to Nick, who was bang on the money with the sizing that I needed. As you can see, they're ticking most boxes, cheap, light, and white. So we'll get that out of the way. Handy little case for later. And I've never seen such pristine shoes in the Llama Lab for a very long time. Dials, super tight, which should be good for a few sprint tests. Oh, and a little sticker there. So you can get these custom painted or custom made or whatever you like. I'll put up a few photos of those here. Okay, that's that, but it's not only just the shoes that I'm going today. With my older shoes, I do run these insoles, the old specialized, very old insoles, but they give me more arch support. I don't know much about arch support or feet fitting or anything like that. These, again, you can see I just wear any old shoes, but I do like having a little bit of arch support when I'm riding. So what I've gone with is something that Nick Squalari from Velo Kicks had recommended and I purchased straight away. These G8 insoles, which look very, very funky. So fit guide here, if I, I'm not gonna go through exactly how to do all this, I'm just going to cut them to size, put them in and go for a ride today. But you can see here, these come with different molds and different insets and then different sizes as you work your way up. So you pretty much start with the lowest one, I believe, um, in a very vanilla position based on your foot. I'm not gonna go into all of that today. There are other videos online about all of that, but I'm just gonna run with the R1s and L1s, or the ones. Um, in their default position and I'll see how they feel and go from there But they should be offering a little bit more support than what comes with so similar to my older ones But very different to what comes with any standard shoe, which is uh, Yeah, pretty much Next to nothing through there But as with everything we have to put these shoes on the scales first Before we make any modifications and put the cleats on over with those, out with the scales. Let's see if they're within spec. I'm hoping these are around 500 grams, give or take. Stack them high, 499, <laughs> well done. Hang on. 
498, one gram on the sticker, beautiful. Okay, good to go, we're under 500 grams for the pair. That looks good to me. So these off to the side for now, we need to cut these to size. Uh, these G8 insoles cost me about $160 Australian plus $10 postage, so they are not cheap. But comfort, especially out in the road, is something I'm happy to pay for. Uh, probably not gonna mold them off those. I'll have a look at comparing these to these. Well, actually that's a better way of doing it. Okay, and it does say it's 44, there's a cut line for these. Okay, so we'll go with that. Just don't tell the wife I'm using the good scissors for this. So the 44 cut line. I have to be precise, so definitely good use of the, uh, the good scissors. Where does that go? All the way back here. Okay, one down. Given that was 44, I'm pretty happy. I'll do the same for this one. It's a very faint line. It's like arts and crafts with llama. Done deal. Looks a bit square. Looks a bit square there too. Done, cool, okay. So not the belly kicks, these ones here. Again, I'm, so I'll show you that they come out, they're fully modular. Um, if these work really well, I'll do a follow-up video on all the how-to with some professional advice or links, but I'm no professional when it comes to this, so just an end user. Uh, and the large ones, they're huge. You've got some kind of monster arch happening there. But it is recommended you go to the smallest ones. Again, fit guide here. See if they fit in. Nice and comfy looking too. This is especially around this area here. I've had some older shoes or older, what I mean by older, some new shoes 10 years ago, really tight around the heel that I just couldn't wear. We're in, that looks to be pretty good. Heels up. Perfect, that, that fits perfectly. Oh, and that's, you can't see in there, can you? One down, that was easy. That was a bit tricky getting the heel in. That's now in. Perfect, that's right up. That's perfect sizing on those G8s. Cool. Now we've made a modification. We shall put them back on the weight scales. I could have just weighed the insoles and gone from there, but where's the fun in that? Wooshka, 604. That's a little bit weightier with those in, but again, comfort. I'm not racing up any hills anytime soon. So that's those done. Uh, Zero Float Expedos, which work with both Asiomas and PowerTap P1, P2 pedals. All right. One, two, three. And to save you all the hassle, I'll speed up this process because trying to get cleats to match up can be a bit of a pain. Ready? Let's go. Okay, there we are. 
In a few minutes, we're done, ready to go. Not perfect, but I think close enough by eye. I'm never really any good at lining these things up, but they look good when I'm side by siding them like that or like that. Um, that appears to be facing forward on both of those. And I'll take a tool with me out on the road for the first ride. So I'll know pretty soon whether there's any niggles clipping in and uh, with all the angles, but that looks pretty good. Hopefully we'll encounter no dramas. So it wasn't all sunshine and happy days out there on the bike. My second ride, well, the weather gods had other ideas. And what happens when you head out with beautifully clean new white shoes? It rains. Not only does it rain, they teamed up with the puncture gods. So it really wasn't my day for the second ride out here. However, the shoes held up quite well. Nothing to report there, which is probably the best endorsement that I can give a shoe. I'm quite sensitive on any touch point on the bike, that being the saddle, obviously, the hoods, the hands, the bars, and the feet. If anything is not symmetrical on the shoes, I know about it pretty quickly, and I have in the past gotten rid of shoes because they just didn't quite feel right. These, no hassles at all in the first week of wearing. One of the notable improvements are definitely the dials on these compared to the shoes that I've come from. So putting them on, super easy, you can lock them down nice and tight, flipping the latch down and you're good to go. And removing, flipping the latch up and just take the shoe off. There's no unscrewing of the dials. Super handy. The G8 insoles that I put in here have been going quite well. Still using number ones on the default position. Feels pretty good. I may move up to the number two arch support. I'll see how that goes and keep working from there. If you use the G8s, let me know how you've gone with them and the process that you've gone through to dial them into your foot. I'm keen to hear the experience that others have had as well. So there we are for today, new shoe day, almost as good as new bike day. If you want a longer term review on these or to check in, hit the comments below in a couple of weeks or a couple of months and I'll let you know how these are traveling. Alrighty, thanks for watching.